Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Yellow Alert where we take a look at the dev posts over the past week and break them down for you. So I know what you're thinking, uh, didn't these guys cancel their YouTube channel, move to China and become goat farmers? Yes. Yes we did. No, no we didn't, no. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff going on in our lives over the past couple of months uh, between, you know, marriages and um, health issues and hospital visits and all sorts of other things going on. It's just been a, a trying time over the past couple of months, um, but hopefully we are kind of getting back to some version of normality. Um, we're hoping to be able to put out a little bit more content every month. Um, you know, even if it is only a couple of videos a month, um, it's something um, and we're trying to get back into streaming. But we do appreciate everyone who's kind of stuck by us and, you know, in our Discord and still commenting on our videos and, and that kind of stuff. It, it does mean a lot to us. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much, everyone, for, uh, for keeping is going and um yeah fingers crossed we'll be able to uh, push out a bit more content your way um but anyway let's dive straight in okay so first up we had a post from bird watcher and it said uh, stick users are turning substantially faster than mouse users uh please see and confirm the ic report um so it says here stick users are achieving a 1.5 to 2 second uh, which is about 40% faster turn rate with a pitch and your combo in identical ships versus mouse players. Uh, let's please get this confirmed so CRG takes a long, hard look at it. If proven to be a problem, this difference just can't go to live. Uh, and then he's got a couple of edits. Edit one, uh, this is also a problem in 3.14 live as well. Uh, mouse users have been objectively nerfed for months versus stick users. And edit two, this problem seems to be specifically VJoy related and has been present for multiple patch cycles. CIG, you're allowing an extreme competitive advantage to persist for a long time now. Please fix this fundamental flaw in the system ASAP. Um, so yeah, basically that one to two seconds means the world uh, to Birdwatcher. Um, but Yogi Clat has come back and he's put, thanks for the details, this is under active investigation now. We knew about this bug for a while, but the new 3.14 tunings with the reduced rotation rates emphasize it a lot more. Either way, taking a look now. And then Yogi Clat come back again and said, okay, we got a fix for it. And it also makes the VJoy a lot nicer to use. No dead space at the edges anymore. Uh, I'm not uh, sure if it will be allowed in the initial 3.15 release though. Uh, we'll see about that tomorrow. Uh, and then he came back again and said, uh, we submitted the changes to 78455657493929 numbers. Uh, given that it changes existing rotation space, be prepared that the V-join movement will feel a bit different. Uh, also, the movement space on your HUD is now a square instead of a circle, so it translates better to your mouse movements. If you want to stay with the legacy implementation, you can still use it by setting VJoy type to zero uh, in the console. Please give it a go when the next PTU build comes in. And then finally, there was another response from Yogi Clat that says, actually, there is still a bug present listed here. Uh, please wait for the next build. Um, so they're working on it. They're going to push a fix out in the next build, um, basically for those of you who have noticed an issue. Uh, obviously, I'm mouse and keyboard, so it doesn't really affect me. Um, but I can understand, um, you know, people who care about competitive edge and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, I just die when people come near me and start firing. I just die. It seems the easiest option. OK, so next up, we had a post from Beard Rob uh, and it says pledge armor and guns. New plan to sort of return items sounds sort of bad. If I understood the show today, the new idea is that we will no longer have a planned store to rebuy lost concierge subscriber or RSI site bought guns and armor. We can instead ask the cops to return the items we lost if the person that is holding the items goes to prison. So uh, what if they never get sent to prison? Seems like this is wide open to abuse. Send an item to an alt character that you don't really play often and stuff it in their hab. Now it's gone for good. Will cops eventually raid a hab to look for a stolen pair of slacks? Or what if we just send it drifting into space? This information will shape my future pledge decisions. <laughs> uh, sort of takes the fun out of snagging those limited time items from the store. Not saying CRG should change the plan, but I do think there should be a disclaimer on non-vehicle pledge purchases. Warning, this $15 mining outfit will probably be gone forever when you die. 
So we had a response to this from Richt at CIG and it says, Hey all, just to add some further clarification, the security slash police returning your stolen items to you is just one mechanism and will be able to be used for all high value items that you register. We are still discussing having an in-game shop where you can repurchase your items if you lose them. Nothing has been set in stone yet and we will be having further internal discussions on the matter. For 3.15 though, you may lose your subscriber slash flare items, but that is temporary as they will be re-entitled to your account every new patch cycle. So don't worry people, you won't be losing your shit. Um, I mean, you're losing your minds, but you'll still keep your shit. Okay, so next up we had a post from Adenor and it says, QA, I wonder what kind of QA team works on the Star Citizen project and roughly how many hours of testing is usually done before or during PTU. So we had a response from Bearded at CIG and it says, I'm not QA anymore, but I did help to introduce CIG to the QA specialist system, something I borrowed from a previous job. What kind of QA team? At CIG, we use a combination of QA specialists, live QA and automation testing, which are things that are commonly used for MMO games. It's been several years since I was in the QA team, so I'm going to describe how these work from a general point of view. QA specialists are testers that are expected to be experts on a specific game system. MMO games tend to be too large to expect everyone on the QA team to understand how all the different systems work and the expertise that go into testing various aspects of how the game works requires different sets of skills. These specialists are responsible for maintaining communication with the developers working on the system they are a specialist for maintaining documentation for how to correctly test these systems and communicating with their QA leads so the QA leadership can maintain a good overall idea of the state of the game. The live QA team are firefighters. They help to investigate issues that are taking place on builds that have already been published to the public or PTU environment. They keep a close eye on the issue council in case any new issues that we weren't aware of pop up so that they can be investigated, reproduced and tracked. Automation testing is exactly like it sounds. We have some systems in place that will run scripted tests on the game and report statistics for what the tests ran into. How many hours? Uh, that's something that will change from one build to another. The amount of testing that a build needs will vary depending on how many things have been changed and how difficult the issues are to test. I ran into some issues in the past where it took multiple hours to properly investigate and document a single bug because of how complicated the workflow was for gathering all the needed debug information. I imagine the QA team still runs into issues like that because Star Citizen is pretty complex. New features that get added to the game go through a lot of testing before they're integrated into the versions of the game that is compiled for players and that can take a fair amount of testing dependent on the complexity of the feature, number of bugs and how many iterations the system has to go through before it's in a playable state. So there you go. That's a pretty good answer actually. It kind of breaks down everything we need to know about the QA process. Um, it, quality assurance, um, for those of you who don't know, um, and basically it's just essentially making sure that these bugs do not hit our computers. Um, and obviously, you know, as we know, that's not always the case because there are thousands of bugs in this game, but I'm pretty sure they are doing the best they can with the tools they've got. So, you know, there you go. Okay, so last up we've got a post from Ulf. And it says, countdown to IAE 2951. Uh, the Galaxy's premier annual aerospace event, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, or IAE, starts soon on November 19th. Uh, we've just launched our IAE 2951 website with more info about the event taking place at the Tobin Expo Center on Microtech, including the official schedule. Uh, and you'll find a link to that uh, in the post. Uh, add the event to your calendar and prepare for 13 days of celebration during this year's IAE 2951 with new vehicle announcements, special edition paints and free test flights for over 100 flyable ships. As usual, Jax McCleary will take you behind the scenes and under the hood of Whitley's Guide, the number one ship show. Join us for Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2951 and don't forget the Star Citizen will be free to play from November 19th to December 1st. We can't wait to see you there. Uh, fighting through all the bugs for new players. That's going to be terrifying. But ha ha ha, there you go, IAE 2951. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's it's a decent little expo and, um, you know, we've had some, some fun streaming those and running around in them. So uh, it's always good to see new stuff. So let's hope that they actually have something new to show us. And preferably not a hologram. 
Uh, but hey, what can you do? Okay, so that's it. That is all the uh, the dev posts for this week. Um, there may have been a few more, but these were kind of the, the main ones. Um, and if there's any that we've missed, then do feel free to link them down below in the comments and we'll have a little look at them. Yeah, and if you've got any ideas or thoughts on what we've covered today, uh, then leave them in the comments section down below. Um, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does help us out. Um, we have a very, you know, most of the views for our videos are for non-subscribers, uh, which is fine. I mean, you know, I don't subscribe to everyone I watch, but it does help us out. So, uh, yeah, we do appreciate you. Um, and um, yes, we should be back with some uh, Star Citizen streaming, hopefully on Thursday. Uh, I'm currently playing Nurse. Uh, to my ailing mother so uh, it, it, it may not happen but fingers crossed um, I'll be about on Thursday um, and um, yes don't forget to keep an eye out for our spectrum drama and it will be out on the, uh, the weekend so uh, there you go but thanks everyone very very much for watching um, and we really appreciate your patience with us over the past few months um, and hopefully we will be back to normal soon and uh, that's it thanks very much and see you soon bye bye